Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what is the binomial theorem? This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. Sorry about this ugly toolbar here on the side of the screen. Usually it's at the top of the screen and I crop it out, but I changed the orientation for this video so that we have more horizontal space to work with. With that said, let's get into the lesson. The binomial theorem tells us about binomials that are raised to powers. So here's a binomial, a plus b, and since it's a binomial, we can assume that a is not equal to zero and b is not equal to zero. And this binomial is being raised to the power of n, where n has to be a positive integer. So n could be something like one or two or three and so on. So if we have a binomial raised to the power of a positive integer, then we can use the binomial theorem to figure out the expansion of this expression. For example, if we add a plus b to the power of 2, you might be pretty familiar with what this is. You've probably calculated something like this quite a few times. It's equal to a plus b multiplied by a plus b, and then you just have to use the distributive property to figure this out. This comes out to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Not that bad. This is the expansion of a plus b squared. This isn't too hard to figure out, but if we were to raise a plus b to a higher power, like 4 or 5 or something even greater, figuring out the expansion is a lot more painful. Thankfully, for cases like that, we can use the binomial theorem. So let's scroll over to this next page and write out the binomial theorem. If we have a binomial, a plus b to the power of n, where n is a positive integer, the binomial theorem tells us that this will be equal to the sum from k equals 0 all the way up to n of n choose k multiplied by a to the power of n minus k multiplied by b to the power of k. If you're not familiar with some of these symbols, don't worry about it. We're going to go over all of it. Let's start off with this here. This is read as n choose k, and it's called a binomial coefficient. n choose k is defined like this. It's equal to n factorial divided by k factorial multiplied by n minus k factorial. You might recognize this as the combination formula if you've worked with combinations before. If not, don't worry about it. So let's do an example of calculating a binomial coefficient. Let's say we want to calculate 5 choose 3. This is equal to 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial multiplied by 5 minus 3 factorial. Then, this is going to be equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, because that's how factorials work, divided by 3 times 2 times 1, and then we have 5 minus 3 factorial, that's just 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. Now you can see these 1s, 2s, and 3s will cancel out, so what we're left with is 5 times 4 in the numerator, that's 20, and then 2 times 1 in the denominator, which is just 2. So this is equal to 10, and that's how you calculate a binomial coefficient. Some of them, like this one, are pretty easy to calculate by hand, but some others you'll want to break out a calculator for. Then, the best way to explain how this summation notation works is to just go through an example. So, we'll copy and paste our binomial theorem to another page, and then we'll actually use it to expand a binomial raised to a power. All right, so let's say we had a plus b to the power of 3, and a plus b is a binomial, so a and b are both non-zero. Then, by the binomial theorem, this is equal to the sum from k equals 0 all the way up to 3 of 3 choose k multiplied by a to the power of 3 minus k multiplied by b to the power of k. So k starts at 0 and then goes all the way up to 3. And you can see where we had n in the binomial theorem, now we have 3s because 3 is our exponent in this expression. So how does this sum work? Well, let's go ahead and write it out. We'll expand this sum. Remember, we have to start at k equals 0. So we write this expression for k equals 0. That's going to be 3, choose 0, multiplied by a to the power of 3 minus 0, multiplied by b to the power of 0. 
Then, to this, we're going to add this expression, but now with k equals 1. So now we're going to add 3, choose 1, multiplied by a to the power of 3 minus 1, multiplied by b to the power of 1. Then, we're going to add this expression again, but now with k equals 2. So now we have 3 choose 2, multiplied by a to the power of 3 minus 2, multiplied by b to the power of 2. Now again, we are going to add this expression, but now with k equals 3. And this is the last thing we have to add, because remember we stop at 3. k goes from 0 to 3, so this is the last time we have to add. Adding this expression again with k equals 3, we have 3, choose 3, multiplied by a to the power of 3 minus 3, multiplied by b to the power of 3. So here we go, this is our expanded sum. And you can see how our k value goes up by 1 in each term of this sum. It goes from 0 to 1 to 2, and then finally to 3. And we stop at 3, and remember we started at 0, just like the sum tells us. Go from k equals 0 to k equals 3. And then also notice that the exponent of a is going down by 1 in each term. It goes from 3 minus 0, which is 3, to 3 minus 1, which is 2, to 3 minus 2, which is 1, to 3 minus 3, which is 0. So the exponent of a goes down 1 each term. And then the exponent of b goes up 1 each term, from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. So even though this summation notation here looks kind of ugly, it works out pretty nicely. Now, of course, there's a lot of simplification we can do. So that's what we'll do next, and we'll write this next line in blue. And I'll actually color code this for each term. So we'll start off with red. Let's simplify this here. 3 choose 0 is just equal to 1. I'll write that right here, then a to the power of 3 minus 0 is a to the power of 3, and then b to the power of 0 is just 1, because b is a non-zero number, any non-zero number raised to the power of 0 is 1. So this is just 1 times a cubed times 1. That's just a cubed. And then to that, we'll add the next term. Let's change the color. Here's the next term. 3 choose 1 is just equal to 3 a to the power of 3 minus 1 is a squared, and b to the power of 1 is just b. So we're adding 3 times a squared times b. Now on to the next term. Doing this one now in purple. Here we have 3 choose 2, that is equal to 3. a to the power of 3 minus 2 is just a, and then b to the power of 2 is just b to the power of 2. So now what we're adding is 3 times a times b squared. Then finally, the last term, right here. 3 choose 3 is equal to 1. a to the power of 3 minus 3 is a to the power of 0, which is 1. And then b to the power of 3 is just b to the power of 3. So that's 1 times 1 times b cubed. That's just b cubed. So here we go. This is the expanded form of our expression. We started with a plus b to the power of 3, but then using the binomial theorem, we're able to get here a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. If we had expanded this expression without the binomial theorem, it probably would have taken around the same amount of time. So the binomial theorem didn't save us much time in this case. But that's just because 3 is pretty small. If it had been to the power of 4 or 5, the binomial theorem would save us a lot of time. Also, using the binomial theorem to expand expressions like this makes it a lot easier to do without mistakes. So even when it might not be saving you a ton of time, it's saving you the potential for a lot of mistakes. But really, for any exponent greater than 3, I would definitely use the binomial theorem. Now let's go through one slightly messier example. Let's say we had a squared plus 3b all to the power of 4. By the binomial theorem, this is equal to the sum from k equals 0 all the way up to 4 of 4 choose k multiplied by a to the power of 2 raised to the power of 4 minus k multiplied by 3b all raised to the power of k. Let me rewrite this k here because that was a pretty bad k. So here it is. This is our sum that we're going to expand. 
So this will be equal to, starting at k equals 0, we have 4 choose 0 multiplied by a to the power of 2 all raised to the power of 4 minus 0 multiplied by 3b to the power of 0. And remember, all we have to do is increment k up by 1 and then add the expression again. So now we're adding 4 choose 1 multiplied by a squared raised to the power of 4 minus 1 multiplied by 3b to the power of 1. Then incrementing k up to 2, we add 4 choose 2 multiplied by a squared, which is all getting raised to the power of 4 minus 2, and this is getting multiplied by 3b to the power of 2. And then we increment k up to 3, so now we're adding 4 choose 3 multiplied by a squared, all getting raised to the power of 4 minus 3, and then this is getting multiplied by 3b to the power of 3. All right, pretty long, nasty expression. Remember, we are going from k equals 0 to 4. So now we're up to k equals 4. This is the last thing we need to add. So we add 4, choose 4, multiplied by a squared, raised to the power of 4 minus 4, multiplied by 3b to the power of 4. All right, so this looks pretty nasty, but there's a lot of simplification we can do. I'll change color to blue once again, and we'll do some simplification. So we start off 4 choose 0, that's just 1, and then we have a to the power of 2 to the power of 4 minus 0. That's just a to the power of 2 to the power of 4, which is a to the power of 8 multiplying 2 by 4. So we have a to the power of 8 here, and then 3 times b to the power of 0 is just equal to 1. So we can just leave this here, a to the power of 8. Moving on to the next term, right over here. Here we've got 4 choose 1, that's just equal to 4. Then we have a squared to the power of 4 minus 1, that's just a squared to the power of 3, which is a to the power of 6. And then we have 3b to the power of 1, that's 3b. So this is 4 times a to the power of 6 times 3b. That's equal to 12b times a to the power of 6. So let's add that over here, that's 12b times a to the power of 6. Moving on to the next term, that's right here. 4 choose 2 is equal to 6. Then we have a squared to the power of 4 minus 2. That's just a squared squared, which is a to the power of 4. Then we have 3b to the power of 2, which is 3 squared times b squared, which is 9b squared. So this is 6 times a to the 4th times 9b squared. That's going to be equal to 54 times a to the 4th times b squared. So we'll go over here and add that now. That was, what was it? 54 times a to the fourth times b squared. 54 times a to the fourth times b squared. And this might be bothering some of you, it's bothering me. Let's just flip around this a to the sixth and the b. We'll put the a first and the b second. Doesn't really matter, but I think it looks nicer. So we have a to the sixth times b. All right, moving on to the next term, that is right here. This 4 choose 3, that's equal to 4. Then we have a squared to the power of 4 minus 3, that's just a squared. And then we have 3 times b, all cubed. So that's going to be 3 cubed, which is 27, multiplied by b cubed. 4 times a squared times 27b cubed is 4 times 27, that's going to be 108. So 108 times a squared times b cubed. All right, let's add that, 108 a squared b cubed, right over here, plus 108 a squared b cubed. Notice here that our a exponent is going down by 2 each term instead of going down by 1. And that's because a was already squared here in the original expression. So instead of going down by 1 each term, it's going down by 2. If it was raised to the power of 3, it would be going down 3 each term, and so on. Anyways, moving on to our next term. This is the last one, right here. 4 choose 4 is equal to 1. a squared to the power of 4 minus 4 is a squared to the power of 0, which is also 1. And then 3b to the power of 4. This is equal to 81, that's 3 to the power of 4, times b to the power of 4. 
So this is all just 1 times 1 times 81 times b to the power of 4. So we can add that here, 81 times b to the power of 4. Here we go, this is our final answer. This is the expanded expression. So that's what the binomial theorem is and how we use it. I know that this might seem a little messy, but I hope it's not too overwhelming. The good thing about using the binomial theorem to expand expressions like this is that you're not stuck having to multiply a bunch of polynomials together, because doing that makes it very easy to make mistakes. Instead, the binomial theorem tells you what the expansion is right there. You just have to write it out and do some simplification. Remember that you start at k equals zero, and then you go up to whatever your exponent is. And so then, you just have to add this expression over and over again with k equals zero, k equals one, k equals two, so on and so forth, all the way up to the value of your exponent. You'll also want to be very comfortable plugging binomial coefficients into the calculator of your choice. You should definitely remember the formula and be comfortable doing it by hand, which you'll be able to do with some of them, but for the larger numbers, you'll want to use that calculator and it's going to speed things up a lot. Besides that, just remember to be careful. The binomial theorem is really giving you your answer right here. When you're trying to expand an expression like this, you just have to be careful to not make mistakes when you're writing it out and to not make mistakes when you're simplifying it. And using the binomial theorem, you're able to arrive with confidence at expansions like this. They look pretty nasty, but really it wasn't all that bad to come up with this answer. I definitely recommend giving yourself some practice exercises to get the binomial theorem down. Just come up with some binomials and raise them to some medium-sized powers, something from 5 to 10. I'll put a link to a binomial expansion calculator down in the description so you can check your answers. With that said, I hope this video helped you understand how to use the binomial theorem to expand binomials raised to powers. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If anyone would like to see more examples of using the binomial theorem, just let me know and I'd be happy to make a couple more lessons on it. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You live it up here, dear. There's a light where I float that erases all black. It makes everything.